Hello, this is Russell Hawley from the Tate Geological Museum at Casper College here in Wyoming. And today I'm going to talk to you about one of the most abundant fossils that you can find in this state of ours. And they look like this. They're particularly common in the Sundance Formation. They go by various names. The paleontologists call them squid butts. Uh, the fellow at the rock shop down uh, in Laramie calls them stone seagars but their proper name is belemnites, which is a Greek word meaning dart stone or arrow stone. And uh, they are the internal shells of squid-like creatures that lived here back when Wyoming was at the bottom of the Sundance Sea about 160 million years ago. Now, um, they consist of several parts. This hard bullet-shaped shell is called the guard. And then in the end of the guard is a hollow space. If you look at it end on, you can see a hole there, and that would have been for an air chamber. And that helped uh, keep the animal buoyant in the water as it swam around. When you find one that's broken in half, you can see the shape of that hole. It is uh, shaped like a cone, and hence the name of that air chamber is the phragmacone. And in this diagram, you can see how the phragmacone extends into the solid guard. Sometimes the phragmacone will fill in with calcite and you'll get a natural mold of the inside of the phragmacone right there. Now, uh, in the uh, intact living belemnite, there was also a thin tongue of shell material extending over the mantle cavity to protect the internal organs. That was called the proostracum. It's very delicate and brittle, and in Wyoming, it always broke off and failed to get preserved. I've never found a proostracum, and I've never talked to anybody who has. But uh, very well-preserved uh, belemnites have been found in the Oxford clay of England and uh, in Holzmaden in Germany, and they show us the uh, shape of that uh, proostracum and where it would have gone. In life, of course, the hole was surrounded by a squid-like creature, there were a pair of fins at one end for propulsion and steering, a head in front of the phragmacone, and then a series of 10 arms. Now, unlike a modern squid or octopus, the arms weren't lined with suction cups, but rather with a double row of little chitin hooks. And once again, these are preserved in place in specimens in uh, Holtzmaden and the Oxford clay. Here in Wyoming, though, people have found marine reptiles with lots of those little hooks inside of the rib cage, right about where the stomach would have gone, showing that those ancient reptiles were fond of calamari. Most belemnites that we find are assigned to the genus Pachytuthus, which means thick squid. And these had a short, thick, very heavy guard with the phragmacone extending some ways up into it. But it's also possible to find belemnites that are much longer and thinner with the phragmacone only in the very end of the guard. And these compare favorably to a genus called Cylindratuthus. And these belemnites might belong to that animal or something closely related to it. Even more uncommon, Belemnites that are thick in the middle, but then taper to a point at one end and then narrow down towards the phragmacone, giving it a sort of spindle shape. And these might be Hibolithites or one of its relatives. Belemnites come in a lot of different sizes. This is probably growth stages rather than different species. The smallest are only the size of a pencil point. They're small enough that ants can pick them up and carry them back to their nests. So looking at anthills is a good way to find little tiny belemnites like that. And then they get up to about this size. This is the biggest belemnites that I've got on the table here. The biggest one that I ever saw was found by a friend of mine, and it was as big as a banana. And that's the largest complete and intact belemnite that I've uh, ever seen. But have a look at this. This isn't a belemnite. This is a phragmacone. So if you imagine the rest of the belemnite shell around that, the whole thing would be about that long with the head and the arms attached as well. This whole thing was about 60 or 70 me uh, centimeters long, and that's about as big as belemnites ever get. We also find pathological belemnites. This one's crimped at the end, so it looks like maybe a marine reptile bit off his head and damaged that shell. And then this one's just weird. 
thick here, and then very sharply narrowing down there. This could be a deformed uh, belemnite with a birth defect, or it might have gotten injured at an early age and uh, then healed later on in life. Finally, we've got hints at their social structure. It's not uncommon to find enormous numbers of belemnites all preserved together. So this might have been a vast school or a shoal that were all swimming together when some disaster befell them and killed them and buried them. So today, Wyoming might be the place where the deer and the antelope play, but back during the Jurassic period, it was Squid City. Thank you for listening. <laughs>